What's up everyone and welcome to another Bitcoin market update. In these videos you will learn how to use technical analysis to forecast price movements in your favorite cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin as well as others and also see where we are looking to buy and sell these crypto assets ourselves. So let's get into it here with Bitcoin in the monthly time frame. Monthly time frame, not too much to talk about here. We broke the monthly low from the previous uh, April candle here, um, signifying that this is indeed a top um, short term. Um, we could end up setting this as our higher low and going up from here, but um, we would essentially be bouncing from pretty much nothing um, because there's there's really no support besides the R2 yearly pivot. If we if we bounce off of that, then okay that's uh that's something to watch um but if we go to the weekly time frame we can see that there's no real support that we're bouncing off of um what this could end up being is what we call liquidity grab so where the stop losses below this low got triggered when we went down here so then people the whales in the market the big players could fill their positions for a subsequent rise in price thereafter now that is something that i could see uh happening provided you know that on the shorter term time frames like the daily we can shift the trend back to the bulls it's going to take some time for that to play out it's going to take a few weeks um but uh this would be this week we would have to see a good candle close above this low for that to be the case uh, if we close below that low or below the R2, that's that's not going to be good uh, for continuation. And I would expect to move down to the R1, which is down here at about 38K roughly. If we go to the daily time frame, we can see that we have indeed changed the trend to be bearish. So let's uh, let's talk about that real quick and let's talk about the the trade that I'm currently looking at taking. So the bear trend right here is very clear. We have our high, low, lower high, and then lower low with two candle closes below the key low right here, making this red rectangle right here a uh, resistance zone. And then this gray zone over here, not the one that we're currently in, but this one right here, uh, this is the zone we've been talking about over the past few videos where you can see it's held a support twice and now we've pushed through it. So on the first test of this, this will probably act as resistance for price. And so that is where um, I will look to be going short. Um, one order on the bottom of the wick of this candle, one on the um, this level right here, which is actually on the four hour time frame, which I'll show in a second. And then this level up here on this resistance level that we just printed. So if we look at like the the size of the move, it is likely that we will end up setting a lower high somewhere below this one before coming down. And if we are to change the trend, which is you know entirely possible, then what we'll do is we'll look to come down, form a higher low somewhere above this one here, and then we'll have to come up and go above for a higher high. So what I would what I what I anticipate is going to happen here is we'll come up, we'll either form the low oops, I don't know, grab the measurement tool. I didn't need the measurement tool. I need the drawing tool. So if we come up and we hit this level and we reject off of this without even getting to the red and come down, that's gonna be like the most bearish scenario. Um, the most bullish scenario, in my opinion, is like we come up and we hit this red zone and then we come down to form a higher low somewhere above this one. And then we go up from there. Um, I, I, I just I find it difficult to imagine a scenario where, you know, we go all the way from, you know, 46K up past 57K, you know, in one daily push without stopping. Um, I think that it's it's far more likely that we'll come up, we'll form some sort of a daily uh, high here, come down, and then that's where the the bulls are going to need to um, make their case that we are going to continue to go higher here. And this was indeed a liquidity grab. Now, it for the bulls, we this increasing this significant amount of buying volume down here when we went below this key low here. Um, is something to to note. 
um, because um, if this if this does end up being a bottom, um, this buying volume right here is going to be um, signifying to us as a trader that all right, people are buying this dip, and this is a good time to continue to buy because we're going to go up from here. Um, so this trade, though, the reason why um, you know and and. The more I look at this, the more I think I might just move. I might just remove these two pink lines here. I might just remove my orders here and just do one order right here because this is the more um, this is the confluent level. So when you're trading, you want to look for those high probability uh, moves. And if this is a liquidity grab, the price is going to move up pretty significantly. And so if it does, um, I still think we'll set a lower high before we just blast through this level. Um, but I think that this level right here where this resistance level and this support resistance flip zone are confluent with each other is going to be the area where we probably do that. So that's where I'm going to be looking to go short. Most likely, I'll probably just move my orders up to there. And if that's the case, then, you know, my risk to reward ratio becomes a lot better. Um, and even if we don't go all the way down to that level, let's say we do come down and form a higher low. Um, somewhere inside this gray zone, um, you know, that could still be a two risk reward and it could still be a good trade before we subsequently potentially go to a new higher high. The thing is the momentum now is to the downside. The momentum, once you change the trend and you confirm it, the momentum is carrying the price down rather than up. If we go to the lower term time frames, we can see kind of what I'm talking about here. If we turn on the super guppy EMA indicator, we can see that the EMAs have flipped bearish here in a very convincing fashion. So, you know, we've had this significant drawdown. The higher, uh, the longer, I don't know if you call it longer or the slower EMAs. That's what I was looking for. The slower EMAs are, you know, convincingly red here, um, signifying that if we go into this level on the first test, we'll probably get uh, a rejection, as you can see right here that we got the momentum carried the price down here so once we flip these bearish right here and, and they were red the momentum was this consolidation period was you can see it just slowly got weaker and weaker and weaker until boom we you know we we drew down even more um this this now here what we'll probably see is we'll come up into these red emas at some point and that's going to be where we'll look to um, go short. So that's why I had initially targeted the gray zone. I might keep my orders there just because it is going to be inside of those, those, uh, red EMAs, but the momentum is down now. So, um, so that's what we're watching right now. Um, there's really not much on the lower term timeframes besides that. if we look at the Ichimoku cloud, Ichimoku clouds in the most bearish scenario that it can be in. This is where my other order was on the four hour key June here. Um, so there, when you're in this scenario where the cloud flips red, Tenkin crosses below the key June prices below all of that. This is the opposite of, uh, this scenario up here where we're in the most bullish scenario where the Tenkin crosses above the key June clouds green and the price is above all of that. You can see that mo carried the momentum upwards here. So the momentum, if we come up into this key June level here, the momentum, you know, you can see that's where the key June is. That's where the gray daily support resistance flip zone is. That's also where the super guppy uh, red EMAs are. So that's, in my opinion, that's a good level to keep an eye on uh, for rejection. If we push right through that and we close inside of the cloud, that's going to be um, very good for the bulls. So we'll see what ends up happening there. But that's what, we, that's what we're seeing right now on Bitcoin. Um, if you like this video, give it a like down below and subscribe for future educational content around cryptocurrency and blockchain technology. And if you haven't already, check out our beginner tactical analysis course that we just released on lutheria.com. You can learn all the different fundamental elements of technical analysis so you can get started generating consistent profit, trading cryptocurrencies like Bitcoin, Ethereum, and many others. So we talk about things like volume analysis, trend analysis, how to read candlesticks, how to uh, trade bullish and bearish trends, and a ton of other interesting stuff. So check it out. We're currently running a 20% off discount uh, through May 20th. And 
yeah, it's fantastic. We've already gotten some great reviews from some of our students that have taken it. Um, and you'll find one of those on the website when you check that out. Until tomorrow, onward and upward.